Okay, I need to get this out. The church is not contingent upon America. America is contingent upon the church. The church is not dependent upon America. America is dependent upon the church. The church never was dependent upon a government, a country, money, or military. The lifeline of America is the church. The umbilical cord of America is the church. America was founded on those, the foundations of the church. <clears throat> founded for the church, probably. The umbilical cord of America is the church. The church supplies America. America does not supply the church. Even her freedoms, her money, her freedoms, her government, her powers, her military, that is not the supply for the church. The church supplies America. The church provides the life-giving umbilical cord of oxygen, the life-giving blood and nutrients to America. The church has never been dependent upon things outside of itself to thrive and grow. And it doesn't make sense because the things of God often don't make sense because they're backwards to worldly thinking. We have our own people in the church. We have our own kingdom, our own army, our own king, our own money, our own military, which is us. And the weapons are spiritual. If you cut off if you clamp down, clamp on, sever, tie off an umbilical cord, the life-giving sustenance no longer flows through. In the case of a mother and baby, the baby will die. The mother can live. The baby will die without that. unless cared for by the mother, right? Within the womb, that is that baby's supply. If that supply does not come, the baby will not breathe and be nourished and have that blood exchange and the baby will die. And even outside of the womb, the mother's milk or the nourishment that would come outside of the womb, keep that baby alive. That baby is not independent. That baby is still dependent on the mother or another source, the mother is not dependent upon the baby. Back in the times of Jesus, when they were under oppressive Roman rule, you know, the church thrived. When they stopped thriving is when compromise came and Roman paganism married into true church. Then she was weakened and her power was weakened. Her voice was weakened. The church became weak when she was adulterated with Roman worship, Roman pagan worship, idolatry. The two married together and it compromised her and it stayed compromised for many, 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 many years. And of course, it was Martin Luther that caught on. And of course, we're talking about the Catholic Church. But had she prevailed, 
I would say that was a compromise because there was so much persecution. There was a comp compromise is always dirty and not good. It never, it's never good. Compromise in the kingdom of God. You just can't put the two words together. Okay. So the life source, the umbilical cord comes from the church to America. That's where her blessings and goodness come. America does not provide the church with an umbilical cord of supply. So we need to get that right. America is what it is because of the church. And it would be that way in any country, really. Wherever there is righteousness, there's blessing. It just so happens that this country's foundations, it was founded for, and the foundations are built upon were biblical foundations. It was about, you know, it was a church. As imperfect as she is and as many mistakes as were made, So, sounded better in my head, but, and I wrote this out, but it was just too much. So I'm going to reiterate. I just want to reiterate. When America clamps down cuts, ties, On the umbilical cord of the church, she begins to die off and wither and dissipate and emaciate and starve. She loses her goodness and her life because her life sustenance is spiritual from the church. So whatever happens in this country, and I, I don't believe it's over, Whatever happens right now, we need to remember that the spiritual principle there, this is not about us being dependent on a country, a government, a military, a country's prosperity, an ideology or pol this is the, the church gets her, the church gets her strength and life sustenance from God. We are umbilical corded to God. And that's where our lifeblood and nutrients and oxygen come. In him, we live and move and have our being. He is what strength and righteousness we have. He is the all in all for the church. We, with our presence, supply that to America. Our supply, our supply is not America. Our supply doesn't run out unless we choose to compromise, maybe. Unless we become unrighteous and, and turn away from, from, from doing what is right and turn away from the Lord and, uh, you know, begin to compromise or whatever. When the church starts doing that, she loses her power. She becomes toothless. At the least, she loses her fangs and becomes kind of very harmless dentures. She loses her voice, her roar. So we must never think, if freedoms are taken, which they probably eventually will be. If freedoms are taken, things begin to crumble. There are communist or godless takeovers. Whatever happens, the church thrives in that. It doesn't make sense, but she does. 
You persecute her. Pressure, put pressure on her. Take her freedoms away, whatever, whatever. Push her underground. She thrives and multiplies and the power moves. It doesn't make sense. Because her source is God. God's power is backing her up. But if America's not backed up by the church and the power of the church, she'll waste away. And when she is emaciated, when she doesn't have the lifeblood of the church enough, when she begins to clamp down or sever or tie off her supply, then she starves. Then evil can come in more and more. She's emaciated. Her power is gone. Her military is not enough. Whatever. So we ought not put our faith in the strength of horses or in man. So that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to go blow dry my hair and make it look nice, but I'm but it's like, no, I need to get this out now. Um, contingency. The church is not dependent or contingent on America. America is contingent and dependent on the church. America is not our lifeline, our source, our umbilical cord. It's the other way around. So it's just like a baby and a mother. I think that's it. You know, I remember the story where even in slavery in Egypt, you know, you remember the story of Joseph and his brothers and his brothers end up coming into, into Egypt and, and Joseph sets them and their families up. At the time, there was only the 12 brothers and their wives and children and his father sets them up in Goshen, right? And it's good for many years. And then a Pharaoh comes along that didn't know Joseph and things go really bad. And he gets really, the Pharaoh gets very threatened by the fact that they reproduce so much. There's so many of them. And he's so afraid that they're going to overthrow his power, right? His overthrow him as Pharaoh. So he begins to make them slaves. But the funny thing is, the more, even being slaves, the more they were oppressed, they still multiplied. Isn't that interesting? So the principles of God, we cannot look at this in the carnal, fleshly mind. Discern. Discern what you watched today if you did. Discern what is real and illusion. Discern what is of the Spirit of God and what isn't. Discern His timing. But just, but we need to remember the church is a church. The church, the church is hooked up to the power source, to God, who has all things and owns all things. And the gates of hell will not prevail, right, against his church. So whatever happens, we don't have to be in an idyllic society of freedoms, and prosperity, and a strong military. We don't have to have the American dream. If we go underground, you know what I mean? We'll still get stronger and keep multiplying, and the power will be there. As long as we stay on the straight and narrow, righteous with him, and don't deviate, you know? We want to be led by his spirit. We want, to be, we want to be faithful and true in this thing. We want to be right in our hearts, you know? This is, I want to say this. This is not about the white hats and the black hats. This is not about two parties. This is not about two, two presidents. This is not about like they're bad and we're good. Uh-uh, not at all. We all need help. 
But if we will allow and surrender and abandon ourselves to him and really be what the church really is, it's multiple things. I don't think we've really ever seen it, whatever it is. When she is humbled and walks in that cloak of humility, which is a protection, and when she loves, love is the, is the biggest weapon. Love is the biggest weapon. Real love, not, not mamsy, pamsy, whatever, right? That embraces sin and says whatever, whatever, and is passive. Real love. That is like, that is the baseline of everything that is supposed to be the baseline. And I believe will become the baseline for many of us of what we do. Love is the measuring cup of how much we have allowed him to access us. How much we have allowed him to go into dark places into those little nooks and crannies and things we hold on to and and just our our fallen self our our whatever self love shows up love is kind of the evidence that we've let him do something we've let him in we've given him access not just in salvation that's just the beginning you know you can be saved and be an absolute jerk You can be saved and be unchanged. You can be saved and still operate in your flesh. But this process is dividing us out and making us choose a side where it's not going to be easy to do that. <clears throat> because if you're operating in your flesh, you're either going to have to change or you have to, you're going to have to um, go to the other side. That's what it's going to come down to. So... <clears throat> I think that's all I want to say. Um, but it all goes down to love, just like Corinthians says. Everything goes down, goes back, and is foundational on love. And we, we see the definition of what love is and what love isn't. So... <clears throat> Humility and love, man, that is its power and it's, and, it's, and it's a protection, really. And, you know, the thing about it is we ought not put our trust, you know, it says don't put your trust in horses, whatever. Don't put your trust in, in, in your ultimate trust in military because you know what? The military can go out and if we're dirty, they'll lose. God won't be with them. So we need to, we need to remember that. So it, it kind of like, we can't look at this thing like, well, you know, we're good, the church and they're bad. Uh-uh, we're all dirty and we need, we need some cleaning up. And, and if it's not, you know, dirty sins, it, it's just certain flaws in our character or ways that we have, whatever, that just aren't, that aren't right. He wants us to produce fruit. The fruit of the Spirit gentleness, you know, meekness, self-control, et cetera, et cetera. You know, those things are evidence and love is one of those. Those things are the evidence of, of that we've let him in because there's plenty of evidence that he hasn't been let in when a person is, is still operating in the way they were before salvation or they're still, they're still doing the devil's work. Let the devil use them. They're still, we should change. We should be changed. Sometimes it's super instantaneous. And then sometimes it's gradual. But we should be different. We should be becoming different. And not staying the same. Okay. I think that is all on this day, January 20th, 2021.